Welcome back to another color theory video. I approach building in a rather mechanical way. I like to have rules that I can follow, or at least lean on when I'm having difficulty with the build. If you search Minecraft block palette, you'll get a ton of examples of blocks that work well together, or you'll get these laid out block arrangements, but few talk about why they work or how to make your own. I thought it would be fun to discuss some of these common color schemes and then see how some well-known builds from Hermitcraft Season 8 fit into them. Let's go over some basics real quick. First, we will start with our color wheel. We have our primary colors, red, green, and blue, all 120 degrees from each other. If you're thinking, wait, aren't red, yellow, and blue the primary colors? Well, sort of. In a subtractive model where combining all colors gives you black, red, yellow, and blue can be used as primary colors, but they should actually be magenta, yellow, and cyan, but that's a topic for another video. Because we're using an additive model, as in adding all colors gives us white, cyan, magenta, and yellow are the secondary colors. And then the colors in between the primary and secondary colors are called the tertiary. You can also divide the circle into warm and cool colors. This is a bit subjective, but in general, red hues are considered warm and blue hues are considered cool. We can add a third dimension to our color here. This is the HSB color space, which I've talked about before in some of my other videos. I'm using display entities here, so these blocks aren't real. This allows me to not be stuck to the Minecraft grid and block size. So I can place the blocks in their exact average color position, as well as shrink them down so I can prevent some blocks from uh, overlapping. But Things like quartz, there still will be some overlap. They're very, very similar in color. Now that everything's in place, let's talk about picking colors that work together. I'm gonna to be talking about color schemes, and really any color within a scheme will work with the other colors in that same scheme. There might be specific reasons why you'd pick one over the other, but that is dependent on the look you're trying to create. The simplest scheme is monochrome. You limit yourself to one hue, and all variety comes from its tints, shades, and tones of that pure hue. So everything here is just in this one little red slice. There are two examples of this inside Grian's Diagon Alley. He built one primarily out of crimson wood and then two other ones out of warped wood. If we highlight the blocks used in the warped building, you can see that they fall right into this tight range of hues, making a good example of monochrome. If you look at the crimson building, you see that all of the crimson wood is very monochrome, but Grian also added a couple other blocks just to add a little bit of variety into it. This kind of goes into our second scheme, which we'll get to in a second. One of my favorite Van Gogh paintings, The Old Towers in the Fields, is a great example of a monochrome color scheme. We can load all the colors from that painting into our color world here and see how everything is distributed. I've also scaled the colors based on their abundance in the actual painting itself. But you can see almost everything is kind of in this little diagonal like line. It's uh, quite fascinating to see. If you widen your field of available colors to a few that are adjacent to each other, this is called analogous. All these colors work together because they're right next to each other in the color wheel. We often see these in nature which is probably why we think of them as calming. Think of leaves changing color in the fall. You can use this transition of colors to help guide somebody's eye through a painting or a build. And whatever range of cues you're using, I would try to limit the most distant colors to be about 90 degrees from each other, give or take. Gemini's Cottage Core base is a great example of this scheme. It has some neutral colors and a few splashes of color here and there for contrast, but the bulk of the build falls into the green and orange range with the birch and sandstone kind of bridging that gap in the yellows. On the literal opposite end, we have the complementary color scheme. This uses hues that are across from each other on the color wheel. This will provide the highest amount of contrast and create a very vibrant look. If this is overused though, the effect can be garish and a bit overwhelming. Normally you would want to use some less saturated colors and then maybe a splash of a saturated color for an accent. If you pay attention to any movie poster, you will notice a lot of blue and oranges for this reason. 
Since Copper was added to the game, we have been flooded with builds using this. The two end members of Copper Aging are close to opposites, so they make a wonderful pairing. Scar's base uses this extensively. Browns are also in the orange, making them complementary to the blues and greens of Copper. You don't necessarily need to have equal parts of both complements. In fact, it's usually better if you don't. Scar's base uses a lot of neutral tones, and I guess I should say neutral tones work with almost any scheme. B-Dub's Moon is another good example of this. The Moon uses complementary colors, but the muted tones makes it a bit more soothing. The blocks aren't strictly complementary. This is more of what's called a side complement. You know, right across from here you'd have like blue, but instead you go over into these greens a little bit. This is a good example of how bending the rules can still make something look amazing. Van Gogh's Starry Night is a classic example of complementary colors. You can see it's mostly weighted over in the blues, and then you have a smaller amount of yellows added, and it really makes the stars stand out more in the painting. Another way to bend the rules is something called split complementary. So what you do is you split one of the complements and use the adjacent two hues. So in this case, instead of using purple, we're going to use magenta and blue. I couldn't find an example of this in Hermitcraft Season 8, but I did find one in Season 7. Impulse's C Pyramid is mostly made of neutral blocks, but it uses three accent colors. If we look at the blocks, you can see the pinks are on one side, and then on the opposite side, it is split between this green color of the leaves and the blue of the water spilling down the sides. If you keep the angle of the complementary colors the same distance from the direct complement, everything will still work together. If you keep widening the distance until everything is equal, we arrive at the triadic color scheme. All of these hues are 120 degrees from each other. When building this, you usually want to have one color as a primary color, and then just keep the other two as little accent or support colors. If we look at Doc's Goat Mantis at the cursed chunk, the non-neutral colors are mostly purple glass, and then you have some oxidized copper and a few bits of orange acacia for contrast. All of this works very well together, and you still get colors that work together, and you have a nice amount of contrast between everything. So you have your acacia over here, your oxidized copper, and then your purples, and then most of the neutrals in the middle here. And as a bonus, this is kind of a... a a uh, combined color scheme because of the pink also works with the oxidized copper because it's a complement of it. So you have really two schemes in here. I was really happy to find this example. There is also a scheme called tetradic, which is really just two complementary color schemes combined. You can have all the colors equally spaced out and then it's called square tetradic, or you can reduce one of the angles and then you just have tetradic. I don't really have a good example of this from the Hermits, but I think you understand the idea. Before we end, I have two other builds that I want to highlight that are examples of a specific style of scheme that I haven't talked about. Pearl's base is nearly monochromatic, but it's a special type. It's almost entirely neutral colors with a small amount of a single saturated color. In photography, I have seen this called a color splash, but I don't actually know if that's the proper term for it. Impulse's base from this season also does this, but he has two saturated colors with the gold and the granite. So this is more of an analogous version of this, of this scheme. These are both wonderful examples of using neutral tones and not just overly saturating your builds with color and how much that can have an impact in your build. This is applicable outside of Minecraft as well, and a healthy understanding of this concept will make anything you do with color better. The last thing before I go, I wanted to share a piece of art with you from my favorite artist, Alphonse Mucha. He started out doing advertisements, and this piece is a good example of combined schemes. The green and purple in the background complement each other, and the woman is nearly all an analogous color scheme. Being able to display pieces of art like this is very fascinating, and was the original idea that made me think about doing this episode. There's much more here to explore with this 3D representation of color in pieces of art, and I really think it shows how powerful Minecraft is as a tool for understanding. I hope that you found all of this useful and helps you out with some future builds or projects. And if you have a question or I got something wrong, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to address it. Have a nice day 
and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.